Next, we'll talk about life in the bays and estuaries of Texas. Estuaries and the wetlands in them are where the young of our most important Gulf species live before becoming adults. This is like a nursery that provides places for young fish, shrimp, and small crabs to hide from predators and find food. Here are a group of students from the Hart Research Institute for Gulf of Mexico Studies, Texas A&M University of Corpus Christi, are sampling life in an estuary near the campus. Sediment from freshwater inflows settles to the bottom in the quiet waters of the wetlands where it provides habitat for wetlands plants and burrowing invertebrates. The sediments carry tiny bits of detritus and nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus that feed plants, plankton, and other life. The microscopic plankton are filtered from the water and eaten by oysters that build reefs. The reefs provide more shelter for fish and crabs. Without enough fresh water, sediments, and nutrients, the estuaries could not function as nursery grounds for the fish and shellfish you like to catch and eat. Marine biologists have determined that 90 to 95 percent of all commercially and recreationally important species are found in our estuaries at some stage in their life cycle. Estuarine ecosystems contain essential nursery habitats for our seafood. As salinity increases from the river side of the estuary out to the saltier part of the estuary, seagrasses replace the freshwater grasses as cover and places to feed. Seagrass beds are also highly productive nursery areas. The plants grow in large areas or clumps called beds. They provide food for microscopic plankton that's at the base of the food web. This then becomes food for newly hatched shrimp, fish, and crabs. As the small animals grow, the seagrass provides a place to hide from predators. It's no wonder seagrass beds are great places to look for spotted sea trout, red drum, and other interesting species. The seagrass beds also help reduce erosion as the plant's roots help bind the soil together. They, they even act as biofilters by helping settle out sediments. Unfortunately, many seagrass beds have been lost. Biologists are working to restore seagrass to some locations in Texas bays and estuaries. More than 90% of the seagrass beds in Galveston Bay have been destroyed because of storms, hurricanes, disease, toxic algae blooms, and development. Dredging, boat propellers, and high currents stir up the water and raise sediments, making the water more turbid. This can block sunlight from reaching the seagrass and even prevent photosynthesis, without which seagrass cannot survive. As of the year 2013, about 80% of Texas' remaining seagrass habitat is located in the Laguna Madre. The Laguna Madre shoreline is protected from development by large ranches on the mainland side and by Padre Island National Seashore on the Barrier Island side, and this protects the Barrier Island from development. Volunteers in the picture are shown helping Texas parks and wildlife biologists replant and restore seagrass to Texas bays and estuaries. Another key habitat providing essential nursery areas for our most important seafood species are oyster reefs. Oysters have been found attached to bricks, boats, cans, tires, bottles, crabs, and even turtle shells. But oysters really prefer to attach to other oysters. So when a large number of oysters join together, they can create a massive underwater structure that's called an oyster reef. Oyster reefs provide habitat for tiny paraphyton and zooplankton. Macroinvertebrates such as crabs, and small fish, and larger fish too, looking for crabs and smaller fish to eat, live in these oyster reefs. An oyster reef creates an entire aquatic community. What many people don't know is that oysters don't start out living in a shell. After hatching from tiny eggs, the soft oysters drift in the water, pulled along by currents in the bay and estuary for oh, oh, about three weeks. They then find a hard surface upon which to attach, and once attached, it's only then that they begin growing their shells. 
Oysters in Texas mostly grow on the shells of other oysters forming an oyster reef over time. When oysters are harvested for food, the whole animal, shell and all, is removed. Then the soft oysters are removed from the shells when prepared as food in restaurants or by seafood processors. And where do all these shells go? Well, in the past, mostly, mostly they've either gone into landfills and are sometimes used as construction materials, such as for roads, but the shells can also be recycled. In Texas, there's an active program to restore oyster reefs through recycling the old shells. Sometimes, school groups take on rebuilding an oyster reef as a class project. The objective is to return oyster shells to oyster reefs, so new oysters will have a place to attach and grow. This is called oyster shell recycling. In cooperation with Texas Parks and Wildlife biologists, oyster shell is returned to oyster reefs to keep the reef healthy and supply new oysters for the future. Without recycling, the shells would be thrown away and the oyster reef would not be able to regenerate new oysters. In the photos, high school students volunteer in a sink your shucks oyster shell recycling program that's sponsored by the Heart Research Institute at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The shuck is the shell that's left after you remove the oyster. Restaurants supply the shucks, but oysters are more than just shells and habitat. They are one of our most important seafoods. In fact, millions of pounds of oysters are harvested each year to be served in restaurants and sold in grocery stores. Many people are employed in the harvesting of these oysters and it's an important part of our coastal economy. To many people, oysters well, they are really just an item on the menu at a restaurant. What they probably don't know is that oysters also serve other roles in the environment besides just serving up some good food. They also help clean up pollution. Oysters are filter feeders. They use their gills to strain tiny food particles such as plankton out of the water. They filter out anything else in the water too, including detritus and sediments. Now this helps clean the water in our, estuary, in our estuaries and bays. Sometimes oysters can ingest pollutants too as they filter the water. If pollutants are in the water, well, the oyster is likely to filter them out. While this helps make the environment healthier for other aquatic life, including other important seafood species, it may make the oysters unsafe for people to eat. The Texas Department of Health determines which areas are polluted, and if an area is too polluted, the health department may declare oysters from that location unsafe to eat.